Okay, so here we go, part two. You see a life mask of that guy there, and then there's, let's see, Mary, and, and this is hard to do. Uh, and then Steve, there, there I am, right there. <laughs> uh, and I got some alginate here, which is, uh, I think it's okay. It, it doesn't last forever, but I have just enough to do this because we're kind of running on fumes here without going back to Berman's and buying more supplies. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our alginate and uh, take an alginate impression material. This is actually a prosthetic grade, so it takes uh, uh, more time to set up. And I can tell just by feeling it. It's it's kind of this vibration chalky feel that it has when it's still okay to use. And it's just a powder like um, plaster, but it's not. It's uh, made from other materials that when you mix it with water, it gels. And this is what we use to make body casts, life casts. Uh, a lot of, now we have silicones that are safe to put on your face directly and on your body that are used uh, Primarily now, I believe, but alginate is really good. The thing about it is it shrinks, so you've got to very quickly pour your stone into it before it shrinks too much. Otherwise, what you make on it's not going to fit you that well. So we're going to make a cast right off this area here. I'm going to mark it out in pencil, and um, yeah, right, right about there. It's just going to be against my brow, which is going to be kind of uncomfortable. But uh, maybe I'll move it up a little higher. I may have a hat on. So, hmm, let me think about this. But I'm going to mix up this material and make the casting. So I've got some alginate on here. As it turns out, the alginate is not in that good a condition. It's only a year old, and it's it's setting up, but it's kind of not that good. So, but uh, you have to brace it with a plaster bandage gauze, and all I need is um, the basic shape to sculpt a small prosthetic will fit inside of this area here uh, that I can make out of silicone. So I'm gonna go ahead and back it up with some plaster bandage gauze, which is used to make uh, casts when you break a leg. So there's the plaster, the plaster bandage gauze on there, and that will set up very hard, just like plaster with gauze in it, and we'll be able to peel this off and pour some stone in it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go do Mary's which you can see the marked off area, that's the area she decided. Basically, these are gonna look like gunshot hits, and the gunshot hits blew off part of her face, and you can see electronics and stuff underneath. And keeping it simple this year, because the party we're going to is all who's who of makeup. Some of the top makeup artists, uh, and most highly decorated Academy Award winning makeup artists, uh, in the business and you know they're all kind of in competition to do these knockout makeups and stuff and i am just mary and i are just going to keep it easy because you know what after all all said and done at the end of the evening you got to take all this stuff off so just want to do something simple and be able to just see everybody and socialize okay so we're going to pull this one off by the way i did mary's too and i think yeah that's set up we're going to pull this off he says knowingly. <clears throat> Came off real clean. Uh, and I think I'm gonna Vaseline this area up right here. And then I'm gonna take this UltraCal and pour it in there. See, UltraCal 30, very thick tool stone, great stuff. Oh, here we go, this is a, uh, a mold for, well, it came off. Whatever it was for, I don't remember, but I think it was for an old age makeup that we did on someone and maybe it's hard to tell. It's a nose. And so here is the casting of the face of, of the nose area and it's mounted into a back plate and it's keyed. And that is so we can, when we pour up foam rubber or silicone, this was for silicone, um, it keys down into here. All this area here is open right up to the edge of the prosthetic. And so this is all open cavity. And what happens is, is the, the pressure that's created in there when you put the two halves together flows very quickly into this area here. So you could have it just solid uh, UltraCal all the way out and not have that. And it would be compressing and it'd be harder to get a tight, thin edge. So you just need 
the prosthetic to be right up to the very edge of the blender edge and flow into this big open cavities here. Uh, we put the material in and we close it like that. You can see how it's open there. And that's so all the material can flow out. And that's why we need to put this on a back plate. Plus it gives you something to sculpt on. So, and as you can see, even since I talked to you at the beginning of this, uh, this is already setting up. So these are gonna set up to a nice and hard and I'll peel them out of the alginate and then put them in a back plate. Blah, back plate. And basically what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of styrene and make a nice circle around it, fill it with some ultracal and put it in. Meanwhile, we're gonna get back to this. So, uh, boy, first thing I have to do is pick off all this old foam. And that ain't not gonna be hard. Uh, you can see where Ah, boy, I mean, look at that foam. You can see where I punched the hair all those years ago. Uh, some of it's mildly flexible, but <laughs> you can see that almost looks like real foam underneath there. And it goes up pretty far. I hate to lose all that forehead. It looks like I'm going to have to. I, I thought that it didn't go up that far. That it was, hmm, well, you know. I made this stuff, I can make it again. I know it's painful to watch, but what are you gonna do? All this foam, all of it has to go. Every last bit of it. Now uh, there's, you can see where the skin actually ended, right there. But you're watching history. Unfold right here at SNG Studio. Um, so we're gonna lose all of this. Uh, I think there's some fun fur down here and there's some gaffer's tape there. And of course this here is totally just turning to dust. Look at that. <laughs> That's what happens to foam rubber. So, uh, you can start to see the underskull. And what's interesting are the two bandages that my late wife put in there to protect my uh, the circles under my eyes because they were they were getting pretty torn up and I can't get them loose I think god they're really stuck in there I have to get those out this is a uh, actual piece of material to keep the brow in place um, these styrene oh my god and see if we get back up in there there, finally we find the end of the prosthetic, or the prosthetic, the foam rubber. And you can see it's still foam rubber, but it's really gone. So I'm going to pick away all of this, and when we come back, we'll see the entire underscore. So, it still works. It still fits me. <laughs> I'm surprised. All these servos here, they still move, and the servos up here still move these. Uh, also, the brows, it moves, uh, you can see. Um, so I get to change the connectors on them and get all the electronics working and then clean all this off. And I took this off, which is the original fur, which I'm gonna try to save because it has all the original colors. And it's really not in bad condition. Uh, there's still a lot of dead foam in there I gotta remove, but hey, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty cool, it still fits me. My temples are wider after 40 something years. So I have to do a little adjustment there to get it down all the way on my head, but it's darn close. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna open these up now. Um, and hopefully I can do it with one hand. <laughs> you know what, I bet I can. Maybe I can do is I can, let's see. Hmm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop. Turn, turn it around like that and put this down like that. Oh my goodness, look at that. You can almost see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can. Okay, so I need to get this out of here. Oh no. It should come out really easy. You see, there's the, uh, the outer shell, which supported the flexible algae material. And uh, we're gonna just peel that off. And I don't know what the heck I'm looking at, except I'm looking at this side of my head right here. You can see 
the ball cap. Uh, Rob Berman made this ball cap, made this for me. So I can make my prosthetic right down to the eye, right into here, and right about here. We need to mount this on a back plate and clean it up. Now we're going to get out Mary's. That goes in the trash. And here's Mary's, which is smaller piece. But we don't want big prosthetics. We want, you know... And hers is kind of locked in there because it overflowed into the plaster part out here. But smartly, I Vaselined it. And because Vaseline keeps plaster from sticking to plaster. There we go. Now it should come out. There it goes. And there's Mary's. And you can just make out the corner of her eye. So the prosthetic's going to be right in here. So now I can mount those both to back plates and let them sit overnight and we will be done. So here I've taken some styrene plastic and uh, interesting, that's kind of got a bend in it, uh, and just bent it around and ca it down a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna fill up both of these with UltraCal 30 more of it and uh, kind of float these in and blend the ultra cowl up into those and that gives me that back plate i showed you before which will enable me to start sculpting tomorrow the prosthetics so you can see these are starting to get kind of blended in more uh it's at a point now where it's starting to get thick enough that i can kind of do this but i'm really waiting for it to go to the next level which is where it's it's uh well it's thicker closer to being set up and I can smooth it down really well by hand. But there's the corner of Mary's eye right there. And this is my forehead right here. You can see the, the bulbs there and the line that is the bald cap right there. Um, and my hairline's like about up to here. So I should be able to get a nice little prosthetic right in here. Just big enough, look like a gun hit, kind of exploded open with some stuff showing, some blinkies going on. Um, you see I can start to fill in all the rough stuff and then of course tomorrow I'll be able to take the drill and a router bit and put the uh, keys in and then I have exactly what I need to sculpt with and, okay so here we are on the sculpting stand and you can see corner of Mary's eye right there and it's blended into this back plate and I will smooth this a little bit more tomorrow and then there's mine over here and as you can see there's the forehead and the the, the uh, ball cap line so I can see right where the ball cap goes and I know my hair is back away from that and I'm going to make mine kind of up on my forehead. So it was great to get those done in one day and get them ready to go. They're just flat on the back. Uh, they're nice and heavy so they'll compress well when I run the silicone. Okay well that does for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will be back tomorrow for a little bit more and then it's going to be the weekend and we're going to take a high at least for two days while I take a break. We'll, we'll get back to it next week and keep restoring this gorilla head and working on the prosthetics.